Hey everybody, welcome back. So a couple weeks ago you saw me review the Holtzman's Gorilla Survival D2 Steel Silverback. Today we are taking a look at the Holtzman's Gorilla Survival Bushcraft called The Bloodline. Alright everybody, welcome back. So yeah, one of the things that I've noticed with the, the names for these knives is you may not find them under their name. Like, very few people could find this under the name Silverback, but uh, if you just search for a D2 steel knife, you found it under Holzman's Gorilla Survival. Same goes with this one. The official name of it is the Bloodline. I'm assuming that's because it's got the red liners in there. But um, it's really called the Holzman's Gorilla Bushcraft Survival Knife. So um, that's pretty much how you'll find it on Amazon. I will put a link directly down below, so if you get, get confused on it, you will find it. This is an 8.6 long knife, 8.6 inch long knife, okay? You got a razor sharp 4.0 blade made of 1095 high carbon steel. That is one of the differences of the other side, the other knife. I don't know if you can notice it, but that edge is just like polished to oblivion there. It's so, so sharp and really, really nice. And this is right out of the box. I've done nothing to this knife yet. I've not even tried to cut with it yet. We're going to do that in the video today. One of the nice parts about this is you have these G10 scales. Again, it's just made to fit in your hand. It feels really, really good in your hand. So I really like the palm swells on them. It just, you know, again, your fingers go right in there, right into your hand, fits right into this section of your hand, and it feels really secure. And the nice thing about G10 is even when it gets wet, it's not really slippy. It, it's, it stays fairly grippy. Um, this is a very kind of a, a little bit of an aggressive design, but not too much. So you don't have that annoying kind of hot spot feeling when you hold it, but it will stay put in your hand, and that's really, really cool. Next up I want to talk about is the Kydex sheath. This is a really nice sheath. This is what it comes with in total here, so we'll move the box back a little bit, and I'll show you everything that it comes with. This is your sheath here. You have a spot for your striker and your ferro rod. You have this nice leather strap that can keep the knife a little more secure. There is a very positive lockup with this. When you put it in there, it snaps into place, and you've got to yank it out. On your belt, it's no big deal, but when you first do it, you may be like, whoa, that's a little tight. You want it that way. Trust me, after use, this will loosen up. You do, again, have that nice tech lock on the back. It is adjustable for belt sizes. I believe that's about the biggest adjustment it can be right now, which is two inches. Really, really nice looking tech lock. This is able to move around a bit, so if you prefer, instead of carrying your knife like this, you want to carry your knife like this on the small of your back, you can do that. You can turn that around. With the uh, Allen screw they have, the Allen wrench they have, you can remove all of this stuff if you don't want it. If you don't want the uh, striker and the uh, ferro rod, if you've got your own and just want to carry the knife, that's fine too. You can do that. Uh, here is the striker. Again, I'm sorry, the ferro rod. Again, same G2 scales with the little red liner in the middle. I love his ferro rods. Now, I have tried this one, and you just get, they're just soft enough where you get these gobs of sparks off. They really, really work well. This is the striker, and as I mentioned in the previous video, um, the striker on the uh, silverback wasn't as sharp as I would have liked it on the edges. This one is. Now, again, that was an easy fix. I just took my Dremel with a sanding wheel and ran it over there and got it nice and sharp, but it was no big deal on this. This works perfectly, and as you can tell, I've already tested it, so I wanted to make sure that that wasn't an issue, so definitely works well. You have your lanyard, if you want to add a lanyard to the knife, and of course, as I mentioned before, you have your Allen key and a little Phillips head on the end there for adjusting this around, and of course, here is the knife. So you can take a look at it. You've got these beautiful G10 scales. They look like they're rubber. They're not. They are real G10. You've got these nice orange liners in the middle there. There's nowhere on this knife that feels like it would be a hot spot. And again, one of the things they do very well is the hand fit in your hand. That fits right in your hand. You have that awesome little palm swell. It's not too big right into this part of your hand here. And as you can tell, I have fairly big hands, and that just fits right in there, easy to use. This is the difference between this and the other, is this is 1095 high carbon steel. Now, you will have to keep this pretty well oiled. Um, it is very well coated to begin with. It came with some oil on it from the, uh, from the factory. But you want to keep this uh, pretty well oiled and cleaned up as you use it. Um, but you won't need to force a patina on this. This will, you know, you got that nice coating on it. It's very slick, so it won't get stuck up and things like that. The Schrade, I swear to God, they used to use truck bed liner on those things. This is nice and smooth, so you won't have any problems like that with it. Really, really nice looking knife. Fits really well in your hand. We are going to give this a good little workout outside. Nice and sturdy, ideal for cutting wood, rope, anything, plastic, paper. 
It's a about a 57 to 60 HRC hardness uh, on the Rockwell scale there. It ensures reliability without going dull quickly. And the nice part, as I said before about these, is the high carbon steel is pretty easy to get a nice razor sharp edge back on should you dull it. The D2 takes a little more work, but holds the edge longer. So that's kind of the, you know, the give and take of the two knives. Another nice thing about this that I noticed that the other one doesn't have is the jimping. It's not a super aggressive, obnoxious, you know, some of the things are ridiculous. It's like, I would have to have a thumb like King Kong to use some of the jimping on some of these knives. That is really, really nice right there. Just enough to give you that extra little positive bite for your finger when you're doing little small tasks. So definitely I like that on there. That is not on the silverback, so it's just on this one. So one other thing that I found with these kind of knives, you know, when you have that really good fit, is it allows you to do really fine detailed work and have more control. And that was one of the things I liked about this. Um, it just, you know, even with the silverback, you had, that, you had that grip in your hand. It felt so right that you were able to do a lot more of uh, detail work and a little more control with it. And it was just a nice feeling knife. Let's compare this to the other really quickly. You notice here on the... Uh, the D2 steel knife, the silverback, that sharpening choil is massive. It's huge. It's not as big on this one, but it's still present. I'll put my hand there so you can see it. You still have a little bit of a sharpening choil there. Again, you do have the jimping on the back here, and no jimping here. And I might add, you notice that I took my little sharpening wheel, and uh, not sharpening wheel, my uh, Dremel wheel, and put a little bit of an edge on this because it was very flat. Um, I do like, I, I mean, I love that they give you a striker, but I do like still using the knife to strike a ferrule rod, so that's why I did that. But there was no jimping on here to begin with, okay? And same weight, same thickness, I would say. Also, too, you'll notice that the blades are different on the end. The 1095 steel blade does not taper on the end until the very end. See, so you got a little taper here, the taper's down. This taper's just at the very end. So your um, sheaths will not be able to interchange. You're going to have to use one sheath for one, one sheath for the other. So no real big deal on that. Just a, just a thing to note, if you're going to be using this knife, you want to know that this sheath will only fit this knife. Now, the ferro rod. Uh, as I mentioned before, I love these ferro rods from him. I don't know what he's using as far as the metals in this, but they just throw gobs of sparks. Um, when you get this going, you will just be shocked at how much stuff just falls off the end of this. Um, and it's really makes, it makes for easy fire starting. Even though it's not a huge ferro rod, you still get enough distance on here to do a nice big long scrape. So we're going to take that outside and try that too with some fat wood. And we're going to try out the knife. We're going to do a little batoning. We're going to test the tip, do a little bit of work on it. So let's take it outside and give it a shot. All right, so we're outside here. I'm on the side of my house today instead of in the backyard uh, work area because it's really, really windy. And this camera has an annoying wind shut off feature that you can barely hear me talk. I could shut it off, but I'd rather just avoid the whole thing and not have a ton of wind noise, so we're out here. What we're going to try to do today, first off, is to baton this piece of wood. We want to see how well this works. Just batoning wood. A nice little chunk here. So we're just going to start right in the center there. And as you can see, it just zips right through that. No problem at all. Be a little extra careful out here because I do have concrete and I don't want to slam that in there. There you go. So absolutely no problem with that. So let's try doing a little a little feather sticking with this and see how well it works. All right. As you can tell, that's working exceptionally well. That's one thing I will say about the shape of this blade is it's a little more conducive to feather sticking than the D2 steel knife. But yeah, that really, really nice curls coming up out of there. That, or I'm getting better at it, one or the other. <laughs> Probably a little bit of both. But yeah, you can see that's really, really working well. So we're going to curve up some of this. And I'm going to get some fat wood, and I'm going to scrape off some uh, fat wood shavings. We're going to try out the striker. But the next thing I want to do, really, is do a tip test on this. And I have a nice big chunk of uh, chunk of wood over here to test that out on. Now, again, when I do knife tests, I don't do destructive knife tests. I'm trying to test this for just average everyday use. Um, am I going to slam this into a piece of wood and a tip break off? I don't do this to, you know, I'm going to slam this into steel and see if it'll hold up. I find people that test knives like that not realistic. You're not going to do that to a knife. So let's give it a little jam in there. Rock it out. Yeah. And this is a very hard piece of wood, by the way. Yeah. No problem whatsoever. Let's take a look at the tip. So 
you definitely have some decent hardness there. There's no edge rolling or any damage. And uh, even after batoning, you can see no damage to the tip at all or, or the, uh, or the uh, edge of the blade. Really, really nice so far. So let us try out the ferro rod, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, why I like these ferro rods. All right, so I wanted to zoom you in here. I got my uh, fatwood all shaved up in there. Got a little bit of the uh, fat rope, this fat rope stick in there too to help because I'm not used to using tiny little rods like this so maybe you'll help me out a little bit yeah. and there we go we got it going alright so you see a few strikes even for somebody like me who uses a larger ferro rod um, you were able to get that going, no problem at all. Definitely throws a ton of sparks. I suspect it's more my technique. Um, I've started trying to do like they tell you to do, where you pull back on it, and uh, I'm learning that. So definitely works. Let me put this out. Let's get back inside, and we will uh, finish up. I do want to do one more test before we finish. I want to carve a little bit and see if I can make a, like a tent stake notch kind of thing. So let's try that out after I put this fire up. So before we get started, I can say I've honestly never needed to make a tent stake, but I find it a good test for myself. You know, I'm not the most experienced woodworker in the world, of course, and it's a good test for me to see just how sharp I can get this edge. Can I make a point out of it? And that's really what I want to do. I just want to carve it. And this is just sailing through this stuff. A little cut there. So, I'll have some sweeping to do after the video. <laughs> but there we go. So I'm getting a good little point on that. I don't want to get it too thin, because if you drive it into the ground too thin, you're going to crack it off. Now what I want to do is kind of use this natural area in here to make a notch for some kind of... Uh, put that in there. And I am kind of carving on this so that I don't um, hit the uh, concrete. There we go. Get back here. Actually, let's use the straight edge on this and go here. Again, this is kind of very soft wood. But if I had to do it, that would definitely work. Got a nice little notch in there. There we go. Let me get one last little tap to that. There you go. I would say that notch would hold up. A little bit tall here, but yeah. You can see, you can just take that down to a point now if you want. I wouldn't go too thin on the end. I'm just thinking about my soil out here. Would probably chew up a really sharp point. And again, this is really light wood, so I wouldn't be using this. But you see how well that works. I'm imp impressed with it so far. Um, hasn't given me any issues. The edge still looks nice and sharp. I don't see any damage or folded over areas or anything. It still feels super sharp. So let's get inside, and I'll wrap up this video, and uh, we can go from there. All right, welcome back inside here. Now, while not a super extensive knife test, um, that did tell me a lot about the knife for my own personal uses. Now, my first impression, it's going to be a good knife. The knife itself has a good amount of weight to it, which I prefer. I like having a, you know, a meaty, healthy knife in my hand when I'm doing that kind of stuff. It makes it feel, it makes knife handling just easier for me. The grip of the handle was just perfect for my hands. Again, they have this innate ability to just fit these things right to my hand. <laughs> I'll tell you, even the D2 uh, Silverback just... You, know, you put it around your hands, and you're just like, wow, that's incredible. Now, we have used it outside, right? We batoned with it, done some chopping and feather sticking and whatever. Still razor sharp. So I'm going to try cutting some uh, paracord with it, and uh, we'll give it a shot here. I'm going to just cut a piece off for my own use. What I'm going to do is do like a four-at-a-time type deal here. And see how well that works. Let me get this set up. Okay. And there you go. Right through all four without even hesitation. So do I think it's a good knife? Absolutely. You know, again, it's a good... If you're going to start out and you need a kit to start out with, it's a good starting kit. This is good without breaking the bank. The price on it is about 100 bucks. But again, 
you're getting a real Kydex sheath, a decent lock on the back of it, not just something that slips onto your belt or snaps around your belt with a little tiny leather strap. Um, you're getting a ferro rod and a striker. Now, for me, my preference is bigger ferro rods, but again, this is something I'm going to be carrying in case of emergency, and you saw I was able to get that fire started with like four or five strikes anyway, so it was really no big deal, um, for me at least. And, uh, you know, I'm using a different technique where I'm pulling back on the rod, so I'm not used to that yet, but I'm finding that it does work pretty well, even with a small rod. I really didn't have to work too hard to get that fire. So anyway, that is the Holstman's Gorilla Survival Bushcraft Survival Life called The Bloodline. I would just say use my link down below to find it, um, even if you don't buy it. If you want more information, you can use the link down below to, uh, to check it out. And because uh, if you search for The Bloodline, you probably won't find it. They name these different things, and sometimes they're not on the site. Sometimes they just put all the information in the title. So I will put a link down below where you can pick this up. So far, I'm loving this thing. You know, it's nice to have, for, for a quality knife, it's nice to have something that's inexpensive, not super, uh, you know, it's not three, four, five hundred dollars for some kind of custom knife. And, you know, again, if you're a new prepper and you screw up with it, you've only lost a hundred dollars. You haven't messed up a custom knife that has to be sent back and fixed. So that is definitely cool. You know, again, I had to learn how to sharpen knives. I had to learn a lot. And seriously, I, I had a lot to learn. And, you know, I was able to learn it. But I went through my share of cheap knives, screwing them up and dulling them instead of sharpening them. So it's nice to have a, a decent quality knife that you can start out with. And you can learn how to sharpen and you don't have to spend a fortune. So like I said, enough of that. We'll get to the point. Um, like I said, you can find the link down below in my store. I will put a link directly to this product. You can also check out our Amazon affiliate store. I put everything that I review in there. I now have two categories. Um, you know, I have my influencer and my uh, prepper products category. Um, I'm just going to continue putting stuff in the prepper products. And we'll move on to another one. And eventually I'm going to change the store around a little bit. So if it looks different, don't worry. Everything's still there. Just click on one or the other. And don't forget to check out our Thrive Life link down below. Um, down below there, you can get everything that you need for uh, your food storage solutions. We do have a sale running right now for you delivery customers who are interested in picking up some stuff. I can put that link down below as well so uh, you can get some deals on that. And don't forget to check out our Food for Patriots link down below. That is preparewithiridium.com. 25-year uh, shelf life food. You set and forget. You buy it. You can put it away in a closet. It's sealed up in a plastic tub or drum, however they send it now. Um, I have it mine in a plastic tub, and it's sealed up good, good for 25 years. Just make sure you store water and you're set to go. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.